Good evening, welcome back to the bird room. I'm Shane from Direct Bird Products and obviously the bird room. Um, welcome back to our channel. Uh, for all you new subscribers, we've had a, a few, or a flurry of new subscribers over the last few weeks. Uh, hopefully, everyone is safe and well. Uh, we have just completely recovered from COVID now and um, the episode that went out last Friday, this is just to catch up because uh, obviously since the last episode we've had so much activity in the bird shed that if I didn't do an episode you'd miss out on what, what's going off from week to week. Um, like I said, the, the Covid um, seemed to bloody last forever and constantly tired and, and no energy but anyway, enough of that rubbish. So in the bird room, not just the canaries, um, obviously we've got quite a few young canaries at the moment but we've got quite a flurry with the British birds as well, which I'll elaborate more on as, as I'm doing the episode. Quite a few on eggs, a few building, and, and some exciting activity with uh, the hybrid, so I'll keep you informed. But as you can probably see behind me, um, got quite a few, like I said, with the canaries, uh, the fives that is. Um, a few taken away, a few weaned off, few birds going to the second round now and we've still had a couple of uh, other nests um, that <sighs> cage 11 as I mentioned before she um, made a nest never, she went to sit but never laid put her nest pan in again as you can probably see from the last episode she laid one egg three days ago and never laid again um, she is sat I've seen her being tread so I do know that um, she has been served by the uh, the male the cock bird. If it's full, I don't know. A couple of days, I'll uh, I'll be able to tell. It was only laid three days ago, so a um, couple more days with the candle, um, the, the torch, the candle torch. I'd be able to check straight away. Um, like I said, with the other canaries, uh, quite a few young ones coming off. So in today's episode, what can you look forward to? Right, products in focus, a quick rundown on, on something that I'm using that I feel confident with and I know a lot of people have bought these type of stuff from us so hopefully they'll have as much success as what I've had. We'll see some youngs being winged, uh, that's where the canaries, as I've said. Um, we'll see a load of obviously canaries with the eggs, chicks and all that. But the main focus, um, Mules and hybrids, the soft bills, and the rest of the British birds. Plenty to look forward to, and if you watch till the end, obviously you'll see more of the variety of the video that we've got um, in the bird room rather than just the canaries. So, with the British birds, I'm talking a little bit quieter than probably normal. With the British birds, obviously, with the flights, so we've got the 10 flights. Five pairs of green pinches in the flights are actually on eggs now. Um, I did check this flight this morning. Uh, this is flight number two. She laid five eggs and I did only check one this morning in and out um, quite clean. It's not something I tend to do very often is go in the flights and check them. But I wanted to check them and the one I got out there, it's full. So fingers crossed that um, they are child. They're due in about, I would say, eight days time, so, like I said, we can only leave them to it. The more we disturb them, um, the worse it's going to be for the birds, and obviously the worse outcome we get. Last thing we want to do with any British bird is disturb them to a point where they come off the eggs. I mean, we've got enough against us breeding these birds without disturbing them, uh, just for video purposes. But she is on eggs. The next um, flight in front is flight number three flight number three she's also an egg she's a, the this flight number two she's nested at the back flight number uh, flight number two flight number three she's there to right here right in the front um, she's on five eggs now she only had her fifth egg today um, it's one thing I've mentioned in the past is I don't take um, the uh, eggs away from any birds in the flight I just think it's more hassle than it's worth in and out of the flights every day taking eggs out and replacing them. I think the easiest way is just to leave them and not just that. One thing I have found is 
with the Ardles, um, they don't tend to sit as heavy anyway, or as, um, as tight as we know it, as, as what the, um, the Canaries may do. Um, they tend to wait till all the, the clutch is finished and then incubate them all together. In flight number four, we have another pair of green finches, um, also on eggs. They lay the same time as, as this one here. So the roll uh, varying, um, I mean, one day in between uh, the odd one or two. Um, flight number four actually had eggs um, two weeks ago. Um, it's one I did mention. Uh, unfortunately, their eggs were clear. Um, I've not checked them, like I said, they're only a few days in. But at the end of the day, least disturbed, the better. The flight after that is the chaffinches. Now, these are coming to fabulous condition. And I, I'm almost pretty sure she's building up. I've not um, spent too much time uh, watching her, uh, see where she's building. But every time I put nesting material in for her, um, I say come down and take it away. And so obviously she's building somewhere and as you will see in the pictures or, or in the short video um, at some point there's I, I, I would say that in my opinion she go probably go for the back nest but she may go for the front nest like she did last year um, that pair of chaffinches there is the one that were in the cage before um, which went to nest but obviously went in the moult so hopefully um, this time they're in the flight, nice and early enough for them that um, they will sit and, and rear her. And that's the young. As we're moving up through the flights, the next two flights from that is a pair of green finches in each one. Also, like I said, on eggs. Um, same thing again, not check them, but I will check them after about 10 days. At least at that point, if they are clear, I've got no problem taking them away especially with the green finches and, and they should go to nest again within two weeks of me removing them. They're not like some birds which they'll get a bit morbid about it and morph about for a few days wondering what's going on. Green finches, done it many a time, just take the, the um, eggs away, pull the nest apart and they'll, they'll start building up, like I said, sometimes within a week. The um, Flight number eight, no, flight number nine, sorry, is the brambles. Today, or this morning, I put some uh, fresh conifer in there, um, spruce things up for them, um, as I've seen them start pulling things about as well. So, um, still very early for bramble finches, but I don't want to knock them back by leaving them another two or three weeks and and start dressing the flight that way. That was the only one that I didn't really do because they were, they were settled as it was anyway. But hopefully this year we can get some off them that actually uh, make it to the sticks because obviously, as you know, last year we had um, a couple of hatch. Um, she never fed them, but she, obviously she went egg bound and a load of issues with that. So the last flight has got the soft bills in, as I've explained in the previous episode. The soft bills in that flight are bearded tits, bearded reelings, whatever you want to call them. Um, cage number two is back on chicks just behind, which you'll see shortly. And she's just feeding her young, which are just actually spawning. So brilliant to see because I know two are actually spawning when I came in. So hopefully um, the other two are back. But anyway, flight number 10, the bearded reelings. They've only been in there, I would say now, three weeks. Um, what I did is basically went and bought some bamboo um, in the wild obviously what they do is nest in reeds in reeds near water um, dress the flat with two um, plants of bamboo straight at the front and a couple of um, the wicker nests which I used for the green finches um, different different styles an half an half um, I would say an half dawn type nest and a, a, a generic cocoa one She's, she's built up actually this morning. I, I went in there and she's built up. I've not actually checked if she's had eggs. I didn't want to disturb them too much because last time I went in the flight, she got out straight away. So luckily at that point I had the windows closed. So she would have been straight out. First place she went straight up to the window and knocked half into the window. So I'm not planning on uh, losing a cock or an end by getting out just for me going and checking. 
but hopefully um, next week she may have eggs she may have eggs now I don't know what I'm going to do is get the endoscope out and place that in the flight over the nest so I can actually keep um, a check on her without actually going in make it a lot easier for me to work with and I'll be able to probably get better footage without going in and disturbing the birds um, rather than me trying to stick a camera in front of them every time hopefully we'll have some of them one thing um, I do want to mention though is obviously this time of year with brambles, chaffinches the soft dough side of stuff is the amount of mealworms um, just make sure you've got a, a steady supply of them because I will tell you now if you've got chaffinches or brambles for that point and there's no live food they're just not going to feed them young no matter what you try and give them, if it's, if it's not live food, they, they just won't feed. Um, you can give them the best egg food in the world, but they need live food. And you've done the hard work getting to nest in the first place, so just go out and get yourself a bit of um, mealworms, live food. There's plenty of options. We're over on the other side of the ship now. Um, just want to mention this weather because I'll tell you something. Started recording and it's a lovely day outside. Looking out now, it's dark as hell just starting to rain the weather itself in, in April is usually quite settled but it's all over the place at the minute and I think it's going to confuse the birds even more but anyway weather's weather and so we're over in the, uh, the hybrid section the, uh, the top cage up here um, she laid one egg he never He's attentive to own the nest, it's not an issue, but that's never going to be full. Um, I took it away anyway and put it under a fire because she only laid one. Um, we'll see, we'll see. But she's not going to nest properly, but I will tell you one thing, he sticks by that nest all day, every day. The cage at the side of it is the, um, the Siskin Cock um, and Nori Chen. Not even an attempt to, to go to nest yet, but still early for Norwich but that's just one of the um, mewling pairs we've got the two chaffinch hybrid pairs here and there both of them are building up so don't really disturb them too long over this side I don't want to be standing right in front of the cage that's why I'm standing offset now um, I would say cage 37 and cage 38 which is these two cages here this is the chaffinch that had the uh, full eggs last year I've seen her constantly squatting for the green finch to tread her. I haven't seen him tread her yet. I'm just hoping he does because um, she's wanting obviously to go down. The nest is almost full now. So I suppose time will tell. The bottom cage, which is just out of shot, he's just got a pair of green finches in which I didn't have room for because I've got another pair of chaffinches. I'll explain that later on. Um, so, we've also got the pair of bullfinches up here, and I'm not going to point the camera too much. Give me a second, while I'll just turn it around now. Not as soon as I put the camera on her, she came off the nest. Now, um, the bullfinch with the green finch um, laid her first egg today. Now, same thing again, I've seen her squatting to be tread by the green finch numerous occasions I've not seen him do it yet remember last year um, he was feeding on the nest so I know they're quite bonded I did take him away for a few days and she was calling for him constantly so I had to put him back in uh, it was it was horrible he's calling for her she's calling for him put him back in there and he seemed to help but good job I did because um, that was before she'd actually gone to nest so she's gone to nest She's laid her first egg today. That was just a quick look at some of the uh, British birds or native birds, whatever you want to call them. Um, hopefully, things are going to pan out this year. I'm going to get quite a few of. Well, it's not a few. I want. I want um, one good one of each. That'll do me. I'll be happy with that. Um, now let's head over uh, to my office. I just want to talk to you about a few nest pans that um, I think are a must and it's going to be product in focus. 
So for the products in focus, like I mentioned before, um, we have a number of obviously various different types of S-pans that we do sell and ones I do use myself. I think my personal choice is obviously um, down to trying different nest pans throughout the years. I mean years ago all I would use is something just like this um, attached to the back of the cage. Now the reason I don't anymore is because obviously the back of the cage if, if you have got my they've got easy access climb at the back of the cage um, straight up in here and into the nest felt and obviously getting on two birds at that point. Whereas where I see it nowadays is by hanging them on the front not is it only easy access for you to look at your birds it's less contact area for the mite to accumulate. They're obviously not going to be at the back of the nest that, um, it, where the um, back of the cage meets the actual nest pan. No matter what you do, um, whether you cover it in Vaseline like I do and, and use all the precautions that you're going to get, you're still going to get some mite at some point. Years ago, I remember, um, this was 2000, 2005 or whatever, and I lifted the nest pan up, there was no sign of any mite whatsoever on the nest. I lifted it up from the back of the cage and all here was covered in mite and obviously ever since then I've tried to use things that I feel that would slow them down if not anything and like I said the the whole point of it is easy access. Unfortunately we have sold that have a lot of these these type and you will see a lot of people um, probably on Facebook using them if you haven't already got them from us already people that have obviously have sworn by them I do use them um, like I said all they do is they'll come to the front of the cage uh, with two hooks like that and you can keep an eye on your birds a lot easier we do also have um, two different sizes in in this type the, the bigger ones actually uh, they, they've got connectors here they're still attached obviously brand new you can actually use them on the front of the wire or on the back of the cage where you can still quick release on them. I mean this one's just coupled with um, the Coco, um, this is the ring type um, nest liner for your bullies or whatever. Ideal, um, these are obviously quite big ones so all finches, perfect for that size. Obviously your exhibition green finches are bigger so again ideal for that size as well. But if you're using them for canaries, um, these ones here, these are ideal for any type of canary. Um, you, your Norwich and stuff, yeah, they're, they're ideal, but obviously this is a borderline, um, obviously the borders, and, uh, borders, Norwich, Yorkies, that type of bird, this is, I won't go any smaller than this, put it that way. Um, so this one is a quick release one as well. Let me just take that off. So basically this port there, goes on your front bars, and they just obviously slips in. Um, they go ideal with uh, any uh, standard nest felt, or if you are breeding British birds, the uh, the smaller cocoa nests fit them ideal. Perfect couple together. But like I said, it, it's just what you feel comfortable with and what you um, are happy using. But I mean, if if I was to start again this season I probably would use these but at the end of the day I'm one for if you've already got things that are working for you carry on using it regardless of that if it suits you there's no point in changing it but like I said these are ones I've used and I'm, I'm still using them now and I'll explain more when we get into the bird room another alternative um, unfortunately we took our clay uh, nests off the website just purely because every time we seem to send them the couriers don't take care of things and the nine times out of ten they end up smashed so um, obviously every time we send them out um, it, it's we're just sending things out just to be smashed and it, it's pointless but obviously the, the same wires we've got um, we do have the plastic versions and obviously they work totally fine I used these last year um, coupled with um, the plastic holders in every uh, one of my cages with the canaries and it successfully reared every single one. Same again, hang on the front, these hang on the front of the wires and away you go. I don't think um, 
anyone's obviously everyone's used these at some point this type and like I said again if it works for you it works for you um, I'm just telling you some options of what I feel but definitely product in focus for me is front hanging nest pans whether it be this kind this kind or this kind so there you go I hope that made sense to you guys um, it's just the way I feel about certain things is as you can probably see most of my cages in fact all of my cages have got front hanging nest pans them days are gone for me where it's um, nest pans on the back um, in obviously in breeding cages that is anyway and as you can see I've got them here um, these are the ones I use in my bird room you may also see uh, some with orange pans in the orange pans in is just my way of doing it for the second round it is because I've got them I'm not trying to say go out and spend money on, on things that you're not going to need if you've got one that works for you a white one will be totally fine it's just me at a glance when I come in from work um, I can know what needs more care of or if my wife's going to come in and top up throughout the day while I'm at work or packing orders as the um, um, the bird stuff's been going crazy she can come in and she'll know which um, I've got chicks by other things as well one thing um, you can probably see in my breeding cards they're at different positions now that is not me being OCD or anything like that because it'll probably send people crazy because they're not all uh, in line. The way I'm doing it is because if they're on the top, um, on obviously the either the left or right side, depending which cage you look at, that means obviously they're on eggs or whatever. If they're in the middle, this cage, this cage, and this cage, and obviously cages further over. That means they've got chicks or weaning chicks or there's chicks around in the nest or just left. It's just so I can see again at a glance. It just makes my job easier. Um, like I said, the different positions um, I put certain things in. Like I said, I put a peg on. Um, obviously not this one now, but I'll usually put a peg on when I'll know uh, the eggs have been set. And I'll put a peg on when I know they're full when I've checked when I know they fall so I ain't going to disturb them again unless I'm bobbing the eggs which I tend to do quite a lot more recently because uh, I feel that it does soften the shell and, and the birds uh, come out a lot freely got a bird over here uh, as you can see in the picture or the, the short video just hatching um, as I came in to top up the feed earlier that's just some, some little tips that you may want to take away from this about certain things is position things slightly different if you know if someone's going to come in your mum your dad while while you're not able to attend the birds in the morning or afternoon if you're at work or whatever rather than i mean i've got cage numbers on so i can say to my wife cage three four five need topping up uh or uh, look for the um the ones with the breeding cards in the middle of the cage because obviously it's easier for her to work out that way rather than just checking through each nest just makes it simpler so with the canaries, like I said, we've from the first round we so far have got 40 young'uns uh, in the nest, whether they've just hatched. There is some more due, um, like I said, some cage number two just hatched um, this morning. Some cages over here just hatched this morning. So all in all, from the first round, um, we may end up with 50 or 60 uh, from the first round of fives. So I'll take the numbers all day long. I'm really, really happy with the progress that. Um, they're making and the first year ever I've changed things up I mean it's not major change I've still got my soak seed here um, that's for when I top the birds up because that's just germinated so I bought it out here where it's a bit cooler and uh, it won't keep sprouting as much as if it's in the house where it's warmer here what I have is the egg mix now over the last two weeks, um, obviously being at home a lot more with COVID and stuff, I've um, started to vary um, the food that I'm giving them. Usually, I've said this many a times, that I um, used to just give them salt seed and egg food constantly. 
Well, I've started to add is um, a bit of a, a, a wetter mix uh, throughout the day because I'm at home to do it and I'll explain more on that as it um, materialises because it can be complicated. So, obviously in the house we'll, through dinner or whatever, we might have some carrots, spare, um, some fruit and veg. So I've been um, mixing that up, obviously, in the blender. Um, as you can see, it blends down beautifully. Um, so three times a week, what I've done for the last two weeks is basically offer different things throughout the week. Carrot, broccoli, um, obviously they're always getting peas. Strawberries and raspberries I put in last week and it went down the tree. Bear in mind if you're going to do apple, um, do it in the morning because later on through the day it'll go off as you, as anyone knows, a week's apples, is, when they're not fully ripened they start to go brown and it's the same situation if you have it in the shed. So if you're giving apple um, in the blender like I did, do it in the morning, halfway through the day, take that out and throw it away, give them a fresh mix. This mix here has got um, spinach in it, broccoli, carrot, apple and kiwi. Also what I've been mixing in there is perilla and chia seed, which I think accounts for the better start I've had this year. Not due to the fact of the birds, I think um, as my birds are all coming in condition perfectly, uh, like I said with the British, the hybrid pairs, over the years I've been, you know, given quite a basic mix, but recently through having the stuff that we have, that we do sell on our website, I've been using a lot more of the things that we do sell and mixing it in there. I mean, also clover seeds, I've got clover seeds that I've been putting in there, a little uh, sprinkling, not, not majorly a lot of them. And I'm not saying you have to do it, but I've tried this these last two weeks and it seems to have had a, a positive effect on the birds. Um, having that bit of variety rather than just salt seed and egg food every day with the peas or broccoli or whatever, spinach, just by mixing it up a couple of times, three times a week, giving them that variety, I think is really out the birds. You probably can't hear, but it's absolutely bucket to me down out there. Oof, I'm glad I'm in here where it's nice and dry. On this side of the shed, um, this is the new block that I spoke about in the earlier episodes. Cage number 33 uh, just actually ticks off this morning. 34 as this morning and 37. We've got five or six different nests in here uh, with birds at different points. Um, some three to four days old, some seven or eight days old, or some fresh and just that. So I don't want to spend too much time over in this corner. But so far so good and they're doing brilliantly really. So now we're in uh, the new bird shed which is housing majority of the wean chicks. I mean what we've got here is four in a nest um, from a heavily variegated we end up with um, a clear, a variegated and two heavily variegated. We sadly lost two from this one uh, when we had that hard frost in the morning. It does happen, there's nothing we can really do about it. The next cage across there's um, two different nests in there, they're all feeding on their own so Happy days with them really. Um, in the ones above us we've got um, just the overspill really. Um, what it was is the um, the ones that turned out to be ends that we did have paired up. Um, I've managed to run cocks or a cock with a couple of them. This one here, I mean this is just um, a spare cock bird that we had a white one but is not sure quality but I'll use them more for feeders. This one here, she sat tight, she sat tight. The other pair, um, it's, it's one of the other greens, like I said, it's not, um, not the quality that I would want, really. Hopefully, we have got one coming in. Um, I spoke to one or two people, and one possibly will be coming in, a really good quality, heavily variegated, so well, we'll see. But like I said, this is where they're gonna be winged. Um, they all seem to be doing quite well in here, so I'm quite happy with it, 100% loads of natural sunlight, 
Um, they're all feed on their own, um, well except for this cage here. And we've got more to move in as you've seen in the video that we have got a lot more coming along in there. So within no time I, I imagine this shed to be completely full of young'uns. Fingers crossed that is anyway. Sadly that's the end of uh, today's episode. Um, make sure you tune into uh, the next one. We are looking to get them back on track for the um, the Sunday episodes. Um, it's just like I said, uh, there's a lot been going off in the shed since obviously the last episode, which was late due to this and that. So like I said, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss anything in the coming episodes. Anything you do need, directbirdproducts.com or send us a message on Facebook. Uh, plenty going to be happening. We've also booked in uh, three of my friends. Two of them have rarer variety of canaries. One is uh, Jamie Taylor, which has got the cinnamon canaries. Another one, um, Chris Canaries, and a good friend of mine, Chris. We also will be filming it is at some point over the next couple of weeks, month or so. Um, just waiting for him to finish his new bird shed. So plenty, plenty to look forward to in the coming weeks. We've also got um, a variation episode of the Derek Old No One. At some point, that is over an hour long, as you can imagine. It takes quite a while to load and, and get set up. But that will be coming in a future episode as well. So, loads to do. Um, what I'm going to start and do on our episodes is include the sales we will be attending. Um, so at end of um, episode, every episode that we do, I'm going to tell you which sales I'm going to be at. Come up and have a chat with me. I don't bite much, really. I don't bite. I, uh, some people have, um, I meet quite a lot of people, put it that way, at the, uh, the sales and shows we do go to. And it's nice to have a chit-chat when I do get time to. Um, as you can imagine, sometimes it's pretty hectic, so I don't get that much time. But most of the time we do. So if you are at any of the ones that I do mention on our episodes, pop up and have a chat with me. Um, this week we're going to be at... Um, a new one um, in Romford on Saturday, so be sure to pop down and have a chat and pick anything you need up. Um, that's the other point as well, if any of these sales that um, you do need anything from our website and you do want to order it, I don't mind bringing it to these sales. Um, it is to make everything easier for everyone to get things that they do want. So um, Romford on um, Saturday and Sunday we're at Larkfield, um, another brilliant sale. Both run by really really good guys bird keeping guys themselves so um yeah be sure to pop down to that one also that's in the evening the one in romford's in the morning on saturday so busy weekend all the sales that we do attend are advertised on facebook uk bird sales and shows so um if you aren't already on that page head over um become a member on that page and we'll keep you up to date of this obviously this, this sales throughout the uk um, no matter where you are, not just down south, but obviously up north as well. Um, we do try and advertise every one that we do know of on there, so make sure you check that out anyway. Anyway, that's enough babbling on today from me. Enjoy your weekend. Um, hopefully the weather will be a bit better than it has today. I mean, outside now it's sunny again, so you, you can't plan it, can you? Anyway, thanks everyone for watching, and I will see you in the next episode.